voyage of Christopher Columbus, our own conquistador of the new world, El Caballero del Clarinetti de la Camarada Pacifica, <laughs> Mr. Jose Frank Ballester. Well, Jose, that is the, the most unique introduction for uh, all of these concerts at home. So, uh, <laughs> Caballero, my name is Adrian Spence. I'm the Artistic Director for Camerata Pacifica, and this is episode 16 of Concerts at Home. I can't believe it's 16 of these things that we've done. So That's incredible. A sign of the times. And you're in, you're in Spain now, right? Yeah, I'm in Spain. So how long, so it's, it's easier there now. Although, haven't things been flaring up again? In some parts of Spain, but in my town, Moncofa near Valencia, is, is not too bad. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have any case here. So we're lucky and uh, Things are more peaceful here than big cities. Yeah. So I think we are okay here. And you, you went to Spain from Vancouver, where you were. Yes. You're, you're yeah, I'm on a professor at UBC, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, how were things in Vancouver? In everywhere, Vancouver? everywhere it's not as bad as the United States, right? I know, I know. <laughs> but in Vancouver, things are good. I think they they were very cautious since the, the since the beginning, mm -hmm. and they made the right decisions. And so, when uh, classes were canceled at university, and we went online, uh, we we had only social distancing, so we could go out on walks, but on 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 a distance, right? Mm -hmm. So. It was not too bad, but everybody was very cautious there, and things went very well. And you, you had a, you had a rather indirect flight. Getting back to Spain wasn't straightforward, and you had the quarantine, right? I know it was kind of crazy. You know, traveling back to Spain was one, one was one of the most surreal experiences ever. To see all those airports where usually you hear lots of noise and there are thousands of people and no one was there. It was empty, deserted. And all of a sudden, half an hour later, you will see someone walking with a mask or, or with a screen on the head. It looked like a sci-fi movie. Yeah. And, and the airport didn't sound like an airport. It had a sound of a doctor's visit office or something like that. It was like nothing. It was very surreal. And then when I came back to Spain, I had to quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I, I was lucky that I, I did a COVID test right away. So I knew I, I was not infected with it. And, but I had to quarantine for two weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any playing happening? How long are you, when did you arrive and when are you heading back to Canada? So I arrived uh, around the mid, the mid, mid June and I'm planning to go back to Canada in, in mid-August. Uh, mm -hmm. Are you doing any playing while you're back there? Are you just practicing? Are there performances? I'm, I'm just uh, practicing. There are not many performances. All the concerts got canceled. The only concert I have still standing is one concert in Barcelona in October. And so, but I, I, I'm creating a online and TV televised concert in my town where things will be pre-recorded, uh, kind of using Camerata's model. Mm -hmm. And, and that's going to be in a few weeks on July 22nd. Right. So this weekend um, we are pro make, recording all the videos and all the content. So, and this is so what in Moncofa, and I made a documentary of Moncofa and interviews of people. So it's going to be not only clarinet, it's going to be more things. And believe it or not, this is keeping me very excited. I'm very happy that I'm doing this. So we'll see how it goes. Good, good. I'm going to put up a little map of Spain 
and show people where Mount Kofa is because you, you're in your beautiful part. You're very, that's like Santa Barbara. Yes, on the, the, the Mediterranean Sea, and it's gorgeous here. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. Today, episode 16 is a Jose show. <laughs> so we're going to, we've got three pieces. We got a, we got a piece by an Irish guy, a piece by an Italian, Magnini. I had not heard of this chap before, but I, I found him on your YouTube site. Um, and then the, the, the video that's been viewed most on Camerata Pacifica's YouTube channel, um, nearly 400,000 times. Um, wow. The, the clarinet trio of Beethoven with you and Warren and Annie. I remember that. That was a fun show. Yes. But the first piece, first piece is the Stanford. So, and I introduced this to you, right? The yes, because I, I never played it before. And, and, and you suggested the piece and I learned it. This is then uh, Stanford's Three Intermezzi Opus 13 with Jose Frank Ballester and Molly Markowski. And this is from November 7th. 2018.
Stanford's three, Intermezzi, Opus 13. So Jose, tell, tell me, um, you were born, in, is Moncoff the family home? Is that, is that where you were from? A, is that where you were born? Yeah. Yeah. So how, yes. did, how did you get a clarinet stuck to your face? What happened there? What happened there? Uh, wind bands. We have a, a huge tradition with, with wind bands here. And each town has one or even more wind bands. And I come from a family of musicians. Not my dad and mom, but my uncles, my great grandfather was a clarinet player. And so I always wanted to, to be a musician because since I was four years old or five years old, my aunts who are musicians, they were teaching me solfets and how to sing. And it was such a, I, I learned how to speak and I learned how to sing and solfets with my family. And then there was time for me to pick an instrument and I wanted to play the, the clarinet. And uh, I, we have a lot of clarinet players in my family, but so they suggested for me to learn percussion. And so I, I didn't want to be a percussion player. I wanted to be a clarinet player. I made the percussion teacher always crazy. He said to my dad, I couldn't play. And, they, and my, and my dad is like, what are you going to do with you, Jose? I'm like, dad, give me a clarinet. And so he, they gave me a clarinet. And boom, here I am. And I was so happy to, to be a clarinet player. So where did you study? How did you get, how did you get from Moncofa to, well, you were at Curtis, right? Yeah, I went to Curtis. So how did you get from Moncofa to Philadelphia? Uh, I got, well, I had to go through various conservatories in, in Spain. One conservatory nearby my, my hometown, and then the Valencia Conservatory. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then I didn't know about Curtis at all. And, and the, the current professor at USC, Yehuda Gilad, he heard me in a master class, mm -hmm. and he said, you know, you should audition for Curtis. It's, it's, it would be a wonderful uh, atmosphere for you. And, and, and I didn't know that. And because he told me that, I did. And I got in. And I went into Curtis, which it was a discovery to me. I felt like Harry Potter going to Howard's, in a way. You know, and, and Curtis also looks a little bit like Howard's, in a way. So it was such an incredible experience. So how, so how old were you when you first came to the States? I was around 19 years old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so wait, that was the first time you went straight from Spain to Curtis? Yeah. That's and what, what were, I did. What were your impressions of America when you first arrived here? It was huge. It was big. Everything was big. I was, I come from my town where on the mornings you only hear birds singing. And I remember going to Philadelphia and we had to, to rent my apartment uh, over the phone. I, I never seen that apartment. So when I arrived to the airport, I had a little paper with conversations. I had a conversation for the landlord. I had another conversation for, for my teacher to introduce myself. I, I didn't know how to speak English. Back then they were not asking for TOEFL or an English exam. And, and I literally, I could not understand anything. Like every, any English I learned in Spain, when I got there, people will be asking me, Jose, how are you? And my answer will be like, yes. <laughs> no, it's like a movie. So I remember getting into the taxi, pointing to the taxi driver, the, the address of my landlord, Getting to my landlord's building, this person told me something I didn't know. I just signed the contract, asking him how to, to go to my apartment. They point at me at the apartment. And then I was, all of a sudden I was in a building and my apartment was on the seventh floor. And I never been, I never had an apartment on the seventh floor. Mukofa is like 
there is no buildings with, with more than three floors. And, and I remember getting to, to my apartment and hearing that rumbling sound of a city. And I still remember that sound. It, it, it was shocking to me to hear these like sirens, police, like a big city. I was like shocked. And, and then I, I started exploring the city and I started exploring America and, and, and I, I'm so thankful to America and so thankful to United States because it really helped me a lot creating my career. So I, I own um, a lot. Were, but you were in this apartment by yourself? Yes. Were you lonely? Did you suffer loneliness? Did you suffer where you were? No. no, because right away I met colleagues at Curtis and then all of a sudden you had a big family. Mm -hmm. For a day, I was mesmerized. I was like out of myself, but I, I didn't know. I, I went out of that apartment and I felt like so unproductive. I didn't know how to ask for things. I remember I, I was debating for an hour where to go and buy lunch. And I saw McDonald's and I thought, okay, McDonald's should be easy. I only have to say number one, number two. But then I say number two and the lady said something else, which I don't remember. I, I, and I thought I kept saying number two. <laughs> And that's how that those were my 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 first days there. And then I I made my colleagues at Curtis and they helped me out and 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 I I felt part of a family right away. Yeah. And when when you were still were you still at Curtis when you won Young Concert Artists? Yes, that was my last year at Curtis, so it was perfect because. Uh, I, I I connected my my career as that summer that I graduated from Curtis. Because that, that's a pretty YCA is a pretty that's a pretty good competition to win because they they set up loads of concerts for you, right? They they yes, they, they do. They do. For a while. That's how we met. We met through Bill Jackson. Yeah. He came in at the last moment. Bill Jackson recommended you to us mm -hmm. um <laughs> in 2004 you 2004 yes uh well you fit in the camerata like that man it was it was <laughs> a, a 2004 man we're going on 20 years so 16 years we know each other isn't it crazy right and we both just get younger and younger right Right. <laughs> so, all right. So, great performance career. You pay. You play for. You play all over. You play for Chamber Music Society at Lincoln Center. Um, then, you, when did you become the clarinet professor at UBC? Three years ago. All right. And that's another big change, because Van change. Vancouver, even though it's very different from America, even though it's just there. Yeah. Yeah, but it was a perfect fit for me and I'm so happy to be there. Yeah. So well tell us about the next piece because I came across it um on uh, on your YouTube site. I didn't know the piece. Um I love the I love these kind of pieces, which are it's operatic mm -hmm. repertoire. Oh no, this yes. is operatic. This is what is this? Tell us about the piece and tell us about this your is not it's like an opera too, but it's more like a mazurka, caprice, like a very beautiful saloon piece. And it's one of those pieces where I recorded this piece because very little people play this piece and people they don't know about this piece. Mm -hmm. It's one of those forgotten pieces that I, I would love more kind of players to play it. And so I'm like, okay, I wanna record this obscure piece and bring it to life. And I remember talking to a colleague of mine at UBC, the Terry Dawson, who's the, one of the piano professors. And so we recorded at, at UBC. And, and that's how this video came. And, and it's a beautiful piece. Yeah, I was, I was mixing it up with another piece you play, Rigoletto. We have to get that sometime. Um, yes. 
So this, this I haven't heard of this composer. Do you know anything about this composer? I thought I think he was a clarinet player, and and uh, I don't know much about him. Yeah. Uh, only he, he at that time he was like playing the clarinet and 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 he, he wrote this piece. <laughs> That's the... Aurelio Magnini, right? Magnani. Magnani, and uh, this piece was written in 1897, 100 years after the Beethoven clarinet trio. And mm -hmm. it's Mazurka Caprice for clarinet and piano. And this is Jose Frank Ballester. Yes. And Terence Dawson. <laughs>
great piece, Jose. What a really fun piece. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, the, it could yeah. only have been written by a clarinet player, the one. So. Mm. There's lots of flute repertoire, flute repertoire like that that's been written for flute players. The Schule clarinet off, or the Schule the flute off in the best fight. Um, okay. So as we head towards the last piece in the program, this is, this is a recording from February 10th in 2012. We're going back into the, the archive. You'll see the, 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 the video production on Camarado's part is, is not as sophisticated as it is today. But as I said at the top of the show, this is our most viewed uh, video on our YouTube channel. Um, and it's, it's Jose and Warren and Annie with the Beethoven clarinet trio. And you guys just look like you're having so much fun. Yes, we, we had a lot of fun as it looks. And because they're, they're, you know what I love about this recording is that three of us have a great sense of humor. And it comes along our playing. And you always think of Beethoven like this serious composer on serious music. And, and, and when you see, especially the third movement, the, the way we interacted and the things that we did in the third movement, it brings this kind of hilarious part of Beethoven. And, and us as a performers, we show our, perf our personalities. And, and that was magical. I, I cannot stop thinking about this kind of moment. And moments like that are like what make Camerata special, right? And you are mentioning that this is one of the, the, the most viewed videos. And I cannot tell you how many emails or messages I get around through the year from professors in universities around the world telling me that they use this recording as their reference for their students that they are playing this piece. And when you hear things like that, it, it makes you so happy, right? Because uh, that's why we, we do it. That's why we do what we do. And, and, and when you have that, it's a big rec recognition that, that this, this is one of the few recordings that people will listen to. And that's, that's incredible. It's, yeah, it, it's why, it's why I've been, so careful at the musicians I allow into the camarada circle because what what the people who know us the regular audience members are just going to see Jose and Warren and Annie behaving like they do at lunch or behaving like they do over a few beers except now they've got their instruments in their hands so yeah I love it this is this is this is a classic camarada recording for sure so. Yeah. All right, well, let's listen to it. Hey, Jose, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for 16 years of Camerata Pacifica, 16 years of friendship. Stay safe. Say hi to your thank mom you. from all the Camerata people that came to visit you a few years ago. I will. <laughs> I will. All right, catch you next time. So here we have from February 10th, 2012, uh, the Beethoven Opus 11 Trio for clarinet, piano, and cello in B-flat major.